What kind of manager is Whitey Herzog? I like to make things happen. June 8th, 1980 was the beginning of the end for a decade of mediocre Cardinal baseball. And boy, did Durrell Norman Elbert Herzog make things happen. He left nearby New Athens, Illinois for an eight-year big league career. He learned at the feet of the legendary manager Casey Stengel, which influenced his second career as a manager. After brief stints with the Rangers and Angels, he took over the Kansas City Royals and won three division titles. With the Cardinals, he began to make things happen at the winter meetings of 1980. A guy asked me the other day, what do you need? I said, I need three kinds of pitching. Right-handed, left-handed, and relief. All in all, dealer Herzog sent away 12 players that week and got back nine. Three eventual Hall of Famers changed teams. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. After just falling short of the postseason in the strike year of 1981, Whitey delivered his master strokes, acquiring shortstop Ozzie Smith from San Diego and fleecing the Yankees of a young outfielder named Willie McGee. By October of 1982, Whitey and his revamped Redbirds gave owner Gussie Bush one more championship. By then, Whitey's in-game maneuverings became well known. The following year, KSDK put a wireless mic on the White Rat and genius was revealed. I haven't lost confidence in you. I don't think there or anybody else has. So take the ball, throw the damn ball the way you can throw it. Yeah, you go to left field. I let Ozzy in the ball game. All right. And then I can put Suter in George's spot. Okay. To get what if he gets on? What if he gets on? Then uh, you'll move you to third and put Ozzy. He makes that. Okay. His reputation blossomed even further when he led the Cardinals back to the World Series in 1985 and 1987. Pennant race duels with the Mets gave birth to a fierce rivalry, and key moments became iconic. Smith, corks one into right, down the line, it may go! Go crazy, folks, go crazy! It's... And he hits one to deep left field, and that one is gone! Ironic that the greatest of those moments were home runs, because the Whitey Ball Cardinals were all about speed, speed, and more speed. The fireworks produced on the field brought fans out in droves. Two million at Bush each season became the norm. And in 1987 came the first three million fan season. The Cardinals fell short of another championship, due in part to bad luck. Key injuries to Vince Coleman in 85 and Jack Clark in 87 neutered the Cardinals offense. And then there was that guy, Denton. Over to the right side, Morrell races over to cover, the throw doesn't get him. Whitey, look at it this way, although you may not be looking for a career change, if A. Bartlett Giamatti takes the job to head up the National League, there would be an opening for you at Yale University. Well, you're trying to be funny now, Morv. I don't think that's funny at all. The Cardinals tailed off in the late 1980s, partly due to ownership disinterest and with several key players in their option year seasons and the teams floundering on the field, Whitey stepped down in July of 1990. I just think that we've underachieved. I don't think I've done a good job as a manager this year. I, I, I really just can't get the guys to play and I think anybody could do a better job than me. We really haven't played uh, as well as we can play defensively or fundamentally and I think that's a reflection on me. He never put on a uniform again and in 2010, he got the call to Cooperstown. Whitey was officially what we in St. Louis knew all along, a Hall of Famer. 